Hi, welcome to Engineer's Mindset. I will, take, I will be taking you through the first series of this channel, which is Applied Mechanics. And we are going to be talking about, we will start with two-dimensional force analysis. Now, what is a two-dimensional force? A force is said to be a two-dimensional force when it exists between X and Y Cartesian coordinate system. For instance, I have my graph. This is my Cartesian coordinate system. This is my X. This is my Y. And I have a force, F. This is called a two-dimensional force because it makes an angle. Let's call this angle theta 1. And let's call this angle theta 2. So a two-dimensional force is a force that appears between the X and Y coordinate system, making an angle either to the horizontal or to the vertical. Now, this horizontal component is what we call X component. This, this is X, this is positive X. Once the force points towards your right, it's positive X. Once it goes towards your left, it's negative X. Once it goes upwards, it's positive Y. Once it points downwards, it's negative Y. Okay, so this is the X component of force in the positive direction. This is the X component of force in the negative direction. While this X component, Y component of force positive, Y component of force negative. We can as well call this, we can as well call it horizontal component of force. So if you don't want to use the X component, you can call it the horizontal component, which means pointing to the left. I mean, uh, horizontally. Okay, so it could be positive, it could be negative, depending on what direction of force. So now, if I want to resolve, if I want to find the X component of force, to find the X, X and Y component of the force F. Okay, notice that I can draw an imaginary line from here. And this has automatically become a right angle triangle. So I can pull out this right angle triangle and I have something like this. Okay. This happens to be what? Theta 1. Remember, we have two angles. One to the horizontal, one to the vertical. So if we pull out from here to this point, that means we're making use of what? Theta 1. So the angle here is simply what? Theta 1. And this is the S component of force. So this is S component of force. So forces that point in the X direction, let's use F of X to signify it. Okay why this is the y component of force so force that points here let's use f of y to signify the force okay so we use f of x to represent horizontal component of the force f of y represents vertical component of the force while this line is the magnitude of the force that is given to us f so which is the hypotenuse line so we have here to be what f so we can simply apply what suka to, to find f of x and f of y relating the angle towards the force now, I will teach you this procedure and I will take you through a very sweet shortcut in which you are still going to use to apply and get the same, obtain the same result as what when you apply this whole procedures. Now, this is it. I want to find f of x. f of x means what? x component of force. So, x component of force or horizontal component. Okay. To do that, remember I use Sokatua. So cos theta is adjacent all over hypotenuse. This is the adjacent, while this is opposite to the angle. So cos theta 1, because this theta 1 is adjacent. Adjacent is F1, F, Fx, all over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is supposed to now be the what? The force F. So it now means if I cross multiply, F times cos theta 1 will give me what? F of X. So it means that F of X is simply what? F cos theta 1. So the horizontal component or the x component of this force is simply what the force times cos theta one also y component of force the y component of the force is fy so we relate fy and what the hypotenuse with the angle and this is directly opposite to the angle so we use what so so sine theta one is directly opposite is opposite which is f of y all over hypotenuse, hypotenuse about the the magnitude f. So we have f. So if we also cross multiply, notice that f multiply by sine theta 1. So it means f of y, the y component of force is simply what f sine theta 1. So with this, we have been able to what achieve what the horizontal component, which is this, and then the vertical component, which is this. Now, if we have more than one force in the system, if we have more than one force in the system, then um we could, a need could arise for us to find what the resultant force if we have more than one force in the system then we need to find summation of what horizontal forces okay so when we have more than one force we'll find summation summation of x component force
So we find summation of f component force. Summation of f component force is signified by what the Greek symbol sigma. So this summation f of x. So this means the summation of all the components of the force in the x axis. So for instance, if we had more than one force here, let's say we have another force here, another force here, and we find their x components, then you join them together, you add them together, that will give us what the summation of x component force. Okay, then if we have more than one force in the vertical axis, also we'll call we'll also find the summation of vertical or y component for summation of y component force. Okay, so we we'll use sigma f of y to represent summation of y component force. Now we'll have this. These two forces also appear. We can as well break these two forces into dimension. Okay. Um it will not appear as a right angle triangle in two dimension. Alright, so this will appear. Remember, um, from our Cartesian system, this represents our horizontal component. So this is summation of all the forces in the x axis. Also, this is our vertical component, our y component, these are x components. So this represents summation of all the forces in the y component, and this is the angle between them, theta. Now, this resultant line or this hypotenuse line is what we we'll call resultant resultant force okay this is called resultant force so to obtain resultant force we we'll use what pythagoras theorem resultant force fr is equal to square root of force from pythagoras theorem becomes summation f of x squared plus summation f of y Square that gives us our resultant force. The unit is always what in Newton. So this to find the magnitude, please. Magnitude of the resultant force. Okay. Now some tests could ask you to find the direction of force. Direction of the resultant force. So if they ask you to find the direction of the resultant force, all they are simply saying is to find what theta, the value of theta. So the direction of the resultant force becomes Okay, is theta. So we we'll use tan theta is opposite, which is summation f of y, all over hypo adjacent, which is summation f of x. So we can find out that theta is obtained by getting what the tan inverse, that's actan of summation f of y, summation f of x. So whatever we we'll get, or whenever we we'll evaluate, um, do our analysis from on two dimension, whatever we we'll obtain for summation f of x and summation f of y. If we take that different division and take the act and we can get the direction of force. Sometimes a question could be asked to um, find the resultant force in vector form. So in vector form, resultant force can be presented as resultant force in vector form can be now take note, take note. We said this is the S component of force. In terms of vector, S component represents I. Y, y component represents j so same thing happens here this is minus j this is minus i so s component is i so in terms of vector resultant force in vector form is simply what summation of all the forces in the x that's towards the i direction plus summation force in the y towards the j direction so all you need to do is whatever you get as summation f of x and whatever you get as summation f of y attach i and j to it that will give us the resultant force in vector form okay now i'm going to take you through a very sweet shortcut to do analyzing this i've told you here all you needed to do was to join this line together and you obtain a right angle triangle you bring it out and then you apply to katua and then you get your f of x and f of y now what happens when you have numerous of forces i will teach you a very sweet shortcut to doing this i have this same diagram i have the same diagram this is my x component this is my y component and i have a force f f inclined at theta 1 inclined at theta at uh, theta 2 okay inclined at theta 1 and theta 2 all right so now this is the shortcut i want to resolve this force to the edge component it's very simple the first thing you consider when applying the shortcut is that you pay attention to the arrow sign of the force. So if I resolve, if I want to resolve this force what, to the x component, I will hold the tip of the arrow, drag the force till it meets the x component. Once it meets the x component, which is this x line, pay attention to the direction of what the arrow. Is it pointing to the right? If it points to the right, it's positive. 
if it points to the left is negative that's one secondly did it pass through the angle to get to that particular component if you pass it through the angle and in that quadrant to get to the particular component then multiply that force by the cosine of that angle else multiply the force by the sine of the angle so if it passes through the particular angle to that component then multiply the force by the cosine if it doesn't pass through that angle and that particular component it passes through another angle then you have to multiply by the cos of the other angle and it passes through or now this is what i mean i have this force i want to resolve it to x i pull it to meet x if i pull this line imaginatively till it meets x so that it will point in this direction so it means that this force already is a positive force established and again it passes through this angle from here to this point to get to this line and this angle is theta one so which means this force is actually what in the x axis this force is simply f cos theta one because it passes through theta one like i said if it passes through the angle in the quadrant to get to the components they multiply by the cos and check the direction since the direction is positive so we have f cos theta one now if i want to resolve this same force in the vertical hold the tip of the arrow drag it to meet the vertical line if you do that notice that this force will point in this direction y direction okay so if you pull the force to meet this line the vertical line notice that the force will point upward so it's positive first rule established second rule did it pass through which angle did it pass through in this case it passes through what theta 2 so you move from this point all the way to this side so it passes through angle theta 2 so what do you do multiply the force by the word cosine of that angle theta 2 so the vertical component of this force now will now be f since it's pointing upwards is positive cos theta 2 i also said that if it didn't pass through the angle then that means you have to multiply by a sign so since it did not pass through theta 1 it had to pass through theta 2 it means that this can also be written as what f sine theta 1 very sweet and that's the same thing we got here for f of y f sine theta 1 so we are going to be applying all this you know to solve a more problem in the next video so i'll meet you up with more problems on applied mechanics on two dimension thank you i'll see you in the next video